Welcome to the Retzel Health Law Hotspot. Health Law Hotspot is a podcast for physicians and health professionals that covers the legal issues and trends that affect the healthcare industry. Hey everyone, welcome to the Health Law Hotspot. I'm Erica Adler, shareholder and leader of the healthcare practice at Retzel and Andrus. Today I'm here with Christina Kuda, my health law partner in crime, and we're going to give you an update on what's going on with non-competes. I promised you last time that we would give you an update on what was going on with non-competes in Illinois and throughout the country. And so that's what we're going to do. So Christina, I turn it over to you. What's happened since our last podcast? Sure. So since our last podcast, it all came down to Texas and Texas court issued an injunction that applies to the whole nation. So as we previously indicated, a court in Texas had said that for the parties to a particular lawsuit, they enjoined the application of the FTC non-compete prohibition. Well, that judge decided that uh, that should be applied nationally. So there now is a national ban, essentially, on the FTC rule going into effect. So what that means is a few things. One, currently the FTC rule on non-competes is not enforceable and has not gone into effect. So giving your employees notice, not putting you know, non-competes in your employment agreements is not a thing right now. It's as if the FTC rule hasn't happened. Couple things will happen in the future. One is the FTC can appeal. Last I looked, there wasn't a consensus yet on if they were definitely going to do it or not. And I think because we are so close to the election, and I think probably one party may favor an appeal over another party, there may be some waiting time for that. I don't know, but um, they can appeal. Also, there are other courts in other states that have said they found the rule to be fine and declined to prohibit um, enforcement nationally or particularly with the parties and the cases before those courts. So what we have is what we call a circuit split. We have some courts saying, hey, this rule shouldn't go in effect, we stopped it. And some courts saying, we don't think it's an issue, we think it's fine. So I think eventually, if this does move forward, it's going to go up to the appellate courts. And then I would suspect perhaps the Supreme Court to actually make a decision on whether or not this rule will ever go into effect. But right now you should be acting as if it is not in place and is not going to go into place. Okay, so what that means is that wherever you're sitting right now, you need to know what your state law requires or allows. So for example, here in Illinois where we're sitting, there is a statute that requires employers to give a certain amount of notice and some type of consideration to enforce non-compete. So if you're thinking you want some kind of non-compete in your employment agreement, you really need to still meet those requirements. And if you're not sure how, we can definitely assist you with that, but you still need to meet the state requirements. And that is true of any other state that has very specific requirements. You need to know what your state uh, allows or requires. And I know that, you know, there is an ongoing review and argument about non-competes in many different states, even as we sit here now. So you should continue to check because if you haven't looked recently, there may have actually been some changes in quite a few states. So that's something to keep an eye on. Now, I think you and I talked last time about what a mistake it was to think that the FTC rule was going to go into place. So just not bother putting non-competes in. Mm -hmm. in So for those employers that didn't put one in because they thought they were going to be prohibited, what should they be doing? So you have a couple options. And I do want to say I'm pretty proud of us because you and I initially told people, act like it's not going to affect and we'll deal with it later to avoid this problem. So now, if you have a situation where you hired someone two months ago, you didn't put a non-compete in their employment agreement because you thought, oh, they're not going to be enforceable. Now you have an issue, an issue because you don't have a non-compete and you may really want one and they can be enforced. So, um, you know, if you, it, it really depends on your state. So if you're in a state that has rules on non-competes, like Illinois does, for example, um, you, you can go back to the employer, employee and try to get them to agree to non-compete. You're going to have to pay some kind of consideration. Um, depending on what the in- employee is willing to accept, they may say, okay, or they may say, no, I'm not signing it. Um, so that's 
something to keep in mind. Um, if you're in a state where there are so no in advance rules on how to enforce the non-compete, you could go to an employee and say, hey, we want to go ahead and revise your employment agreement and add a non-compete in that agreement. There may be just contract principle rules that require you to give them some kind of consideration for agreeing to that, to a modification of the employment agreement. So um, it really is a little bit fact specific on where you are and what the employee is also willing to agree to at this point. Um, you know, there's always the option, I suppose, of terminating an agreement and saying, well, if you don't agree to a modification, or if there's a without cause notice term, we're going to give you without cause notice. The problem with that is, do you want to lose an employee? You can see if it's a good employee. So you sort of have to weigh the benefit of, you know, having this employee who's happy and content versus, you know, not having, versus having the non-compete and which one sort of is the better uh, situation for, for your practice. Right. And I think another thing to, to realize going forward is that the non-solicitation provisions are still really effective. And hopefully nobody got rid of those misunderstanding what the FCC yeah. rule was. For those employers that got rid of a geographic non-compete but had a really good non-solicitation, they may still be in an okay position. I know, you know, some employers, doctor employers, feel very strongly, even as employers, that they don't like non-competes, and that's fine. You don't have to have them. A good non-solicitation can protect what's important to you about your business. Mm -hmm. The I'm hearing is that a lot of employers are taking a closer look at their non-competes and, and, you know, just making sure they, they tighten them up. You know, this whole debate about non-competes is really about what is reasonable. And so hopefully, even if you are going to have a non-compete, you should be taking a look to see, do you need a 50-mile non-compete? Is a five-mile non-compete really enough to protect your business? And I think that's really the trend that we're going to see is people crafting or modifying their non-competes to be as reasonable as possible. And of course, at the end of the day, that definitely helps you in a court of law. Yeah. And even in states where there are no specific state laws on enforcement of non-competes or predicates to non-competes, there's always case law. And the trend has pretty much always been that courts don't love broad, vague non-competes. It needs to be narrowly tailored to a specific business interest of the employer and can't really prohibit the employee from unreasonably going to work somewhere. So having it narrowly tailored and taking a look now at your non-competes is probably a great idea because, you know, we're, like you said, we're sort of seeing a trend now. A lot more states are even starting to have laws. Like New York just had legislature passed a law. It was supposed to go into effect July 1st, banning mile restriction competes, and the governor refused to sign it, but it was very close to being signed. And that's a state with a lot of employees. So um, the, the trend is there. So look at your documents now and try to make them as tailored and as customizable as possible for your practice, but in a way that you know more than likely would be enforceable if challenged. Right, and then one other trend that I'm definitely hearing more about now uh, since this whole situation with the FTC is people wanting to include a purchase price uh, so that their non-compete can be bought out either by the employee who wishes to remain in the area or maybe from their new employer. And so I expect to see a lot more of that language, of course, coming up with the right purchase prices, you know, it liquidated damages or whatever you want to call yeah. it penalty, liquidated damages, um, is difficult. In fact, today I was talking with a doctor who has two contracts from two employers in the same area, both of them with the same size non-compete. The one of them had a buyout price of one year's base salary, and the other one had a buyout price of two years base salary. So also, I think as you're going forward, a really a big point of negotiation is, is not going to only be the size of the non-compete. The, the length of time, but also that purchase price. And yeah. I see a lot more of that, but um, those are kind of the trends that I would expect going forward. Agreed, agreed. I think that, you know, we're, we're definitely looking at a, a world where non-competes are being less tolerated. And I think that there's more, I guess, pro-employee in that aspect, um, but they're not dead yet. You can still have them unless your state totally bans them for some reason. You can still have them, and uh, I would suspect any movement by the FTC and any definitive answer is going to take years from now. This is not going to be resolved quickly. 
right? Okay, so to wrap this up, if you're in a state that allows non-competes, continue to use a reasonable geographic non-compete. If you would like, make sure the length of time, the size of the non-compete is reasonable for your particular business. You might consider liquidated damages for an employee to buy out. And very important, continue to use non-solicitation language to protect your patients, referral sources, clients, employees, et cetera. Confidential information provisions, non-disparagement language. These are all usually packaged together in the non-compete type uh, provisions of a contract. So you can use all of these to your advantage right now. Again, make sure they're very reasonable. One last thing that I want to point out to people is that if you're in a state that requires that you provide consideration, that you give a specific notice using very specific language, and you are still not using that language, then you're going to be putting yourself at risk to not be able to enforce your non-compete. I continue to come across contracts. For example, here in Illinois, we've had a statute for a couple of years. I continue to receive contracts uh, from hospitals and uh, groups where they have not used that language. And we have gotten many of our physicians out of non-competes where that language is not included. So if you're looking to make sure you have an enforceable non-compete, you should be talking to counsel to make sure you're using those magic words. And that's not just Illinois. There's other states as well where that applies. So and that, yeah, and those I think that's, are, sorry, I was going to say too, yeah, that that's particularly of note when you're paying a non-compete consideration over time. There are like clients that'll say, well, we'll pay you $5,000, but we're going to pay it over 12 months. And then after six months, an employee leaves and there's six months left of that payment. I've had many doctors say, you know, practices say, well, I don't have to pay that other money, right? Well, you do because you're offering that for the non-compete. So if you don't pay the rest of that money when the person leaves, you've opened a door to saying you didn't pay the full consideration and then the non-compete's not enforceable. So be careful when you're paying over time. There should always be language talking about what happens if somebody tries to leave before you've finished all those payments. That's a great point. Um, all right. Any final thoughts on this topic? Uh, no, I don't think it's the last we're going to talk about it, but at least the FTC portion of it, it's going to be a while. I, I agree. And we'll keep you updated if anything else happens that might be of interest. And of course, if you have any questions, you reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Thanks, Christina, for joining me as always. And thank yeah. all of you for joining us on the Health Law Hotspot. You can catch the rest of our episodes at ralaw.com, and we'll see you next time. The Retzel Health Law Hotspot is made available by the firm and its attorneys for educational purposes and to provide general information, not to provide specific legal advice. Use of the Retzel Health Law Hotspot does not create an attorney-client relationship between you and the firm or any of its attorneys. The Retzel Health Law Hotspot should not be used as a substitute for competent legal advice, and you should contact an attorney in your state about any legal needs or questions you may have.